Welcome once again to Math for Game Developers. Last time we looked at how to smoothly move our character down a barren 3D cubic landscape. And this time we're going to look at how to use the mouse to control where the character is looking. And we're going to do that with Euler angles. They were developed by this guy, Leonard Euler, who was one of the greatest mathematicians ever. He was super cool and we're going to learn about his Euler angle angles and they can specify any 3D rotation with just three values. Let's take a look. The first value is pitch. Pitch means up and down motion. So if your character is looking up, is looking down, or if a plane is flying up or flying towards the ground, that's pitch. And the next one's yaw. Yaw is like if you're turning your head side to side. Or if it's like a plane, is the plane flying north, south, east, or west? And then the final one is roll. It's got a nice blue color here for roll. Now roll is like tilting your head to the side as if someone just asked you an interesting question. Or, or maybe if it's a plane, then it's banking the plane to, a si to the side like if you're going to make a turn. And so that's pitch, yaw, and roll. With these three values, you can specify any 3D rotation at all. And so we are going to have, let's see, we're going to make pitch, that was pitch, yaw, and roll. We have our Euler angles. How are we going to use these Euler angles? When the player moves the mouse, he can move it up and down like this, or left and right like so. And so when the player moves the mouse up and down, that's going to be put into our pitch. That up and down motion is going to go into the pitch value. And when the player moves the mouse left and right, that'll go into the yaw value. And so then we'll have these Euler angles, and all I'll have to do then is convert them to just a regular XYZ vector like, we, like we've been working with so far, XYZ. And con this conversion is actually not hard to do if you know a little bit of trigonometry. So I'm going to review real quickly with you some trigonometry by drawing a... Uh, Wow, that doesn't look like a right triangle at all, but trust me, it's a right triangle. Uh, we're going to review our trigonometry a little bit. This is theta. <clears throat> it's a stand-in for whatever angle we want to use. So it could be pitch, yaw, or roll. And we're going to look at the relationship between the size of this triangle. That's y, and that's not z, but x. And we're going to use a hypotenuse of 1. So we have two equations here. The first is that sine of theta equals y, the opposite, over 1. Or in other words, sine of theta equals y. So I can think of this side right here as the sine side. The up and down is the sine. And the second equation is that cosine of our angle, theta, is x, the opposite, over 1 the hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse. So I can think of x, or our lateral dimension, as cosine. So keep that in mind. x is cosine, y is sine. And now let's create our vector. I'm going to write out our three vector components here, x, y, and z, equals, equals, equals. And we're going to break each component down as a, as a relation of these pitch, yaw, and roll values. So first, let's go to a new color and look at pitch. I'm going to draw a quick vector here. This is, our, this is our vector that we want to discover. And this angle right here is the pitch. And this will be y. Our y dimension is the up-down dimension. If uh, if you're making a game where z is up down, then you can compensate. And this will be our x or z dimensions. These are the lateral dimensions. So we're looking at this picture from the side. And it's pretty easy to see what, uh, what y is going to be. It's just going to be sine of p. Because if you look, sine is our up down dimension. So let's write that here, sine p. Okay, so that's uh, one thing down. Let's go to the next one. I'm going to choose a pretty green color. I'm going to draw another vector. <laughs> I can do better than that. 
here's our second vector. Now, instead of looking from the side, this time I'm going to look from the top. This will be uh, z, and this will be x, our two lateral dimensions. And so that will make this angle the yaw. Okay, so as the player looks around in the left-right direction, changes his yaw, then this will change right here. And it's again pretty see that we're going to get z by taking sine of the yaw, and we're going to get x by taking cosine of the yaw. So we'll fill that in right here. Let's see, x is cosine yaw, and y is, and z is sine yaw. Great. Now there's only one thing left to do, and that's to consider what happens if you're flying a plane straight up, exactly up, right directly up, and if you roll that plane, if you bank that plane, it doesn't matter what the yaw or the roll of that plane is, because you're still heading perfectly directly up, and so we need to take that into consideration. We're going to actually look at the, let's switch back to this blue, the cosine of the pitch, cosine of the pitch. Consider that when this vector gets closer to, to when the pitch rises and this vector starts pointing exactly up, then this cosine of the pitch squeezes down and down and down and down to zero. So if we scale both the x and the z by the cosine of the pitch, cosine pitch, then that should give us the desired effect. As the pitch increases, cosine of the pitch approaches zero, and x and z will zero themselves out. And now, all together, this will give us a unit length vector, v hat, that tells us what direction the player is facing. That's exactly what we want. Let's go plug it into the game. So now I've created a new Euler Angles class, or E Angle for short. Uh, I've got a few constructors, a few methods that I'll get to in a second. But look down here, this is where I've, I've specified the storage for the class. That's three floating points, P for pitch, Y for y'all, and R for roll. Nice and concise, easy to remember. So let's fill out that two vector method. We're going to make a return, uh, a, res a result vector, and this is what we're going to return at the end of the function. So result.x, what was that? Here's our formula on the right, cosine of the yaw times cosine of the pitch. And the result.y is going to be uh, just sine of the pitch, and the result.z is sine of the yaw times cosine of the pitch. That's it. Return our results. I can't type today. Now this normalized function down here, all this is, is just a, it keeps the pitch values between negative 90 and positive 90, and it keeps the yaw values going from negative 180 to positive 180 so that it's sane. So that turning the mouse like four times in a row doesn't cause it to freak out. All right, let's go over to the to the, back to the game function where I've added this new mouse motion method. This gets called every time the player moves the mouse. And you can see I've set up this sensitivity value. This is like the sensitivity setting and you see in a lot of games, mouse sensitivity. And you can see I've got it set really far down low because we we need that to be really far low. It would just be too sensitive. So what do we do now? Box dot set the view angles, set the pitch, and if you remember, the pitch is determined by up and down movement of the mouse. So we're going to add that to y, and then multiply that sensitivity in there. I'm sorry, this needs to be the mouse moved. Why? So we're going to add how much the mouse has moved, except we're going to scale it by how much sensitivity we want. And let's do the same thing for yaw. Yaw is determined by the x, uh, the lateral movement of the mouse, and then we'll throw that sensitivity in there. And one thing left, we have to normalize. We're going to call that normalization method that we mentioned before. Now let's go down to the render where you see this is where I set the camera position and I give it the position of the box 
and then I subtract this vector. Instead of doing that, we're going to subtract the view angles, but we're going to turn into that vector. This is what we call the two vector function. And then I'm going to also multiply by 5 to back it up a little bit more. So why subtract? Because we want, we're looking at the box. We want to back up a little bit from the box so that we can look at the box. So that's why we subtract. Let's run it because we've done it. And get in the game. There we go. We are rotating with the mouse. Except there's one problem is that moving forward and back doesn't respond to where the mouse is looking. As you can see, I'm, I'm looking to the left, but my dude still moves uh, forward just in one single direction. So that's a problem, and we're going to fix it next time. See you then.